This video is the complete guide to filming on your iPhone. So we're gonna cover off a simple step-by-step -step process that you can use every time you're filming with your iPhone to get amazing results. And we're also gonna throw in a heap of tips and tricks along the way. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. iPhones are an amazing tool for creating videos. They're super portable, the cameras on them are easy to use, and you can get some amazing results. Now, while they're capable of some great results straight out of the box, with some simple tricks and tips, you can easily 10X your results. Now, the last time we did a video like this, it turned out to be one of the most popular videos videos on our channel. And that's because while the tips are so simple to implement, they can give you huge results with your video quality. But that video is now a few years old and technology and phones and cameras have come quite a way since then. And we've also got a few new fresh tips that are gonna help you even further. So in this video, we're gonna run through step-by-step -step how to film professional looking videos with your iPhone, that the actual process itself doesn't require any additional gear or apps. You can get great results with just your phone. But for those of you that are looking to take things a step further, then we will be looking at some recommended gear as well. Things like tripods, microphones, and lighting equipment that will help you take things to the next level. But again, don't worry about that now. You can get great results with just your phone if that's all you've got, and you can upgrade or look into these other things as you progress. And just like the last time we created this video, this actual video is shot using the front-facing camera on an iPhone. This one is the iPhone 7. Plus, so it's not the latest device, and you can still see the quality of this video to show you that it's possible and that you can get great results using the gear you have. And don't worry about taking notes as we go through because we've put together a free quick start reference guide that you can download and print out and use while you're creating your videos so that you don't miss anything. So make sure you stick around to the end for that link. So now into the actual process. Step number one is to prepare your content for filming. You wanna make sure that all your preparation is done before you actually set foot or stand in front of the camera. So that includes things like getting your script, getting your dot points, getting whatever it is, all the information, all the research, everything you need to actually present your video and create your video, make sure that all of that is done beforehand. And for some people that could be a full on word for word script that they need to help them present that to camera. For others, it could just be dot points or for some others, it could just be a goal. The goal of this video is to explain how to create better videos on an iPhone. Whatever it is for you, your personality type and how you create videos, just make sure that all your planning is done up front. Step number two is to select a suitable location for filming. So when you're doing that, you wanna look at things like environmental variables or things that are beyond your control. Things like light changing outside, things like noise, background noise. You can hear I've got a few birds and things outside the window there. But all of these things are definitely worth taking into consideration when you're selecting your location so that you're able to remove as many of these distractions or variables as possible. The other thing that you need to consider is that your background isn't distracting and that it's also a good fit for the types of videos you're creating. If you're a chef, you're not gonna go and film in a gym or vice versa. So you wanna make sure that your background fits the types of videos that you're creating but also isn't distracting. So it doesn't have anything in there that's going to take your viewer's attention away from you creating the content and sharing the content, you want them to be focused on you and what you're saying. You also wanna look at the amount of light in the room or the environment that you're going to be filming in. Typically, iPhones aren't great in low light, especially on video versus photos. So you wanna make sure that the room or the location you're filming in has a lot of light. If not, we will cover some lighting a little bit later and some portable lighting options, but you wanna make sure that the room is bright wherever possible. Another thing that you really need to be aware of is that because we're gonna be creating videos using our iPhones, we're not really gonna get that shallow depth of field or that blurry background look that you would do on something like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So taking that into consideration when you're picking your background, it's gonna mean that a lot of the things in your background are going to be in focus. You'll see that the background behind me now, I'd say most of it is gonna be in focus. It might be a little bit out of focus, but definitely nowhere near as out of focus or as blurry as the videos are regularly regularly on this channel when we're shooting with a DSLR. So it's definitely not a deal breaker, but it's something that you need to be aware of because things that you may not see with different cameras, you will see when you're creating them with your smartphone. The third step is to decide whether you're going to be shooting your videos with the front facing camera or the rear camera, the primary camera on your device. Now there is some pros and cons of each. Typically the front facing camera, while it's going to be easier to shoot, 
because you can see yourself and see what's going on. That's actually what I'm using here right now for this one. It's typically lower quality though than the primary camera or the camera on the back of your device. So this is really going to be personal preference and what's going to be the easiest for you to create the videos. The front facing camera is more than high enough quality to create good looking videos. But if you want the best quality out of your phone, then you're going to want to use the camera on the back. Now in a perfect scenario, if you're using the camera on the back of your device, then you'd have someone there to help you and to set it up and to frame the shot and to make sure that everything is looking good while you're recording your video. But that's not always gonna be the case. So there are a couple of ways that you can actually film yourself and sit in front of the camera and use that rear camera. And I'll put a link up in the cards now with a video running through a few different options you've got for filming on your iPhone and being able to monitor and see everything while you're sitting in front of the camera. Step number four is a really obvious one when you hear it, but that's to clean your camera lens. Told you it was pretty obvious when you hear it, but so many people don't have that habit of cleaning their camera lens. Whether you're gonna take a photo or video, you should always build that habit of cleaning your camera lens. It's so simple, but it can make a huge difference to the photos and videos that you're going to be creating. Now, these are our phones, they're up against our faces. It could have makeup, fingerprints, dirt, grime, whatever. So you wanna build that habit where you're cleaning your camera lens every time you're gonna take a photo or a video. Step number five is to set up your shot. So we've already picked out our location, we know where we're gonna be shooting. Now we wanna get our phone to the correct height to frame the shot and get everything looking the way that you want. Now ideally here, this is where you will wanna be using a tripod. A great small tripod that I would recommend, and it's the one I'm currently using right now, is the Archon tripod. And you can also purchase it in a kit that comes with a phone holder as well. And the phone holder will let you rotate your phone and, and mount it either in vertical or in landscape mode. So it's good for things like Instagram stories as well as horizontal pieces of content like this. So this is a great example of a portable tripod that would be great to use on a desk like it is here. If you need a tripod that goes up higher, then we will have some recommended gear listed down in the description. But the overall goal here is to set up your phone or the, specifically the camera in your phone to be slightly below eye level. So whether you're gonna be standing or sitting, use a tripod wherever you can to get your phone to that height and out of your hands. Now, if you don't have access to a tripod, then you could use whatever it is that you've got. Use books rest your phone up against a bookcase, whatever it takes to get your phone out of your hands. You wanna get your phone out of your hands wherever possible so that your phone is stable and it's not gonna be shaky and moving around while you're creating your videos. Now, if you are creating videos where you're going to be walking around and there's gonna be a lot of movement, then what I would strongly recommend is that you look at something like a gimbal or a stabilizer for your phone. It could be something like the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 or even the Juin Smooth 4. Now, if a stabilizer or a gimbal is gonna to be too expensive expensive for you, then I would still recommend getting your phone out of your hands wherever possible and using something like even a selfie stick. Never thought that I'd recommend it, but a selfie stick is going to give you a smoother, more stable image as you're gonna be walking around than just holding your phone out in your hand. So it's all about getting that professional result and getting your phones out of your hands is a great way to do that. Step number six is lighting. Now it's really important to remember that the focus of your video, the presenter, yourself, or whoever it is, or whatever it is, is the focus of your video needs to be lit well. So in the case of this shot here, I've got the ceiling lights on and I've also got a light up above my head here, which is lighting up my face. There's also the window, but the blinds are shut to stop a heap of that light coming in and changing throughout the video. So if you've got access to lights, then use them to light yourself up first as the priority. And then if you've got additional lights, then you can use them to light up your background or your scene. Now, if you don't have any lights, then really you can use whatever else you might have around. So whether it's a desk lamp, whether it's a light, whether it's a bedside table light, whatever lights you've got, bring them in to light up your face or the subject of your video. Now, if you don't have access to any lights, then try to sit in front of a window or sit outside so you're getting some natural light hitting your face. And we do have yet another video that I'm gonna link up in the cards again in the description, that is a lighting tutorial. So if you're interested in lighting and options that you have around that, then you can check out that video. But again, use what you have and upgrade when you can or when you need to. So the actual light that I'm using for this video here is a Yongnyo YN300R. And it's currently selling for around the $40 price point on Amazon. So this isn't something that's gonna break the bank either. Step number seven is to connect your audio. Now, wherever possible, I would say that you should be using an additional microphone to get the best quality audio into your camera for your videos. Now, even if you're using one of the latest phones that doesn't have a headphone jack plug, then you can still use the Lightning to 3.5 millimeter 
meter or lightning to headphone jack adapter that came with your phone to really plug in almost any microphone out there. There's adapters these days that you can adapt almost any microphone to work on your iPhone. I'm gonna go ahead and throw another video up in the cards around our recommended microphones. Now when you're looking at microphones, there's a couple of really solid options. The microphone that I'm using right now is a $20 wired lapel microphone called the Boya BYM1. Now I've done a lot of videos on this channel using this microphone. It works on both DSLR and on iPhone, obviously. So at that $20 price point, it's amazing value. Now, if you don't want to be wired or physically connected to your phone, then you could look at a mini shotgun microphone, something like the Rode Video Micro. Now, these microphones are great because they're going to pick up the audio in the direction that the microphone is facing. So if there's two people on camera here now, then we'd both be getting picked up from that one microphone. Or the alternative to that is that we're both wearing a lapel or wired microphone. And just to show you the microphone and where I've actually got it placed for this video, it's just taped under my shirt here. So if you'd like to know how to do that, there'll be another video linked up in the cards showing you how to hide your lapel microphone and still get great audio. Now, if you don't have access to any other microphones, the built-in microphone on your phone, while it's not as good as the other options, it's still not that bad, especially if you're recording your videos in a controlled environment. So if you're gonna be recording in a room like this, then you'll still be able to get pretty good results with the microphone just in the phone. But where it's really gonna fall apart is out in the wind or in noisy environments. Step number eight is to check your phone settings. Now this is to make sure that everything is set up and correct before you actually start shooting your videos. So on your iPhone, if you go to settings, and then go down to camera, then you can select what quality you're gonna be recording your videos in. Now this will depend on what phone you've actually got, whether you're able to choose 720p, 1080p, or even 4K for the quality of the recorded video that you're going to be creating. What I always recommend is that you shoot in the highest quality possible for your device, but also for the types of videos you're going to be creating. Just as a general rule, if you're going to be shooting in 1080p, it's going to use around 2.5 megabytes per second of video. And on average, for a 4K video, it could be upwards of five to seven megabytes per second of video. So if your phone doesn't have a lot of storage, if it's a 16 gig or 32, or you've got a heap of storage, but it might be used with other photos and videos and things. And you wanna make sure that you've cleared that off and that you've got enough storage available to be able to create your videos. The last thing you wanna have happen is to run out of storage while you're halfway through making a video. Step number nine is to enable flight mode or do not disturb mode. Now this is another one of those things. You don't wanna be interrupted while you're recording. So by enabling flight mode, it's actually gonna disconnect your phone from the internet and from your mobile network as well, meaning that you're not gonna have any incoming calls or any other notifications notifications because your phone is going to be isolated. Now while you've got flight mode on, then you can still enable Wi-Fi. So if you do need internet access, then you can have flight mode on, so it's gonna block off all of your calls and texts coming through, but you're able to still get internet access. But obviously with internet access, you're gonna open yourselves up to notifications from things like Facebook, Instagram, or really any other app that is internet connected on your device. So what I would suggest you do then is look at blocking mode or do not disturb mode. And this is where you can go through and set up to only allow calls from certain people or to only allow notifications coming through from certain people or certain apps while you're filming your videos. Step number 10 is to lock down your camera settings. So obviously you've already chosen front camera or back camera. When you open up the camera app, you wanna set that accordingly. And then you wanna lock down your focus and your exposure. Now, if you just leave everything on auto and you don't lock anything down, then really you're giving all the power and the control to your phone to automatically make adjustments as you're recording your videos, which could mean as something happens in the background or someone walks through your shot, the focus could change or as you move around in your shot, the focus might adjust and then you might be out of focus for a good chunk of your video. Exactly the same with the exposure or the brightness. If it's left on auto, then it can automatically change as a cloud comes over outside or as something else changes in your scene. So wherever possible, lock these settings down, kick them out of auto and you choose and you decide what's in focus and what the brightness of your shot is. So on your iPhone, you can do that really easily by tapping and holding on what you want to be in focus. So in this case here, I would tap on my face, I would long press on it until you get a flashing yellow box. And then it comes up on the screen saying that the focus is locked and the exposure is locked at that point. So then if you wanna make adjustments to the brightness and make your shot brighter or darker, all you need to do is swipe up or swipe down on your phone to make your shot brighter or darker. Once you let go, it's gonna save that for you for the length of your video recording. Now there are third party or aftermarket camera apps that you can get for your iPhone that are gonna give you a lot more control. Things like your white balance, 
settings, things like your shutter speed, and a lot more control over the look and feel of your video right in the camera app. A great one that we recommend is Filmic Pro, and we do have a full walkthrough on Filmic Pro, again, linked in the cards and down in the description as well. If you're looking to really kick things into advanced mode and take full advantage of the quality that these phones are capable of. Step number 11 is another one that's gonna sound obvious when you hear it, but that's to do a test. So once you've got everything set up and ready to go, you actually wanna press record and record a short 15, 20 second clip of you talking so you can test your audio, you can make sure that the shot looks good, that it's framed correctly, that everything is how you want it. Then go back, play it back. So the biggest reason that you wanna make sure that you're doing a test run is because it's much easier to find out after 10 or 15 seconds or 20 seconds worth of recording that there's something wrong or something isn't the way that you want it. Uh, rather than doing it at the end when you find out there's something critically wrong with your video. And that leads us to step number 12, which is recording your video. So press record, stand in position, sit in position, and start delivering your content. But while you're delivering your content, it's really important to keep eye contact with your viewers. So make sure that you're looking at the camera lens itself and not at your screen. If I'm looking at the screen right now, I'm not making eye contact with you guys, which means that there's no disconnect. Now, as distracting as it would be, to look at yourself to make sure that everything is good, you really need to make sure that your eyes are on the viewer, and that you're talking and connecting to them, and you're not distracted by looking at yourself to make sure that the shot is good. So that is a huge thing, and it can dramatically change the effect that your video is going to have. And the last thing to be aware of while you're filming is things changing in your shot or in your scene. It could be that a truck has pulled up outside and is now making a heap of background noise, or that the light has changed, or the clouds have come over and the light in your room has changed heap. So you want to be aware of these things while you're creating your videos so that if you need to, you can stop, make the necessary adjustments or move to a different location if there's a heap of noise now, then continue your video with all of those things sorted. So that's it. That's the complete guide to creating professional looking videos using your iPhone. Now linked on screen is our free PDF reference guide, which takes you through all of those steps that you can download and print out as a guide or a checklist while you're filming your video so that you don't miss any of those steps. So check out the link linked on screen now, and I'll see you soon.